السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله بسم الله الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم all praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whom serve Allah guides will never be led astray. Whom serve Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, no God except Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Ya ayyuhalladheena O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves, and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Pray that may Allah open my chest, make easy for me this task, and loosen the knots of my tongue that this speech may be understood. And glory be to you, Allah, glory be to you alone, that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. Bismillah, again, it's a blessed, blessed, blessing to be here with you all. Uh, greetings of peace and salam uh, amidst these difficult times. And Juma Mubarak, uh, blessed day of Juma. Uh, in, in light of all the different things that have been going on. Uh, sometimes words are hard to capture what we may be feeling, how we may be uh, internalizing or externalizing certain things, news, headlines, and whatnot. Uh, of course, with all that has been going on in Palestine and, and you know, and especially elsewhere around the world, uh, it's, 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 you know, just something that really sometimes hits at your faith. And it's something that really uh, takes a dent at uh, just your your belief and shakes the foundations and shakes the roots and sometimes leaves us feeling like how do we kind of even hold on to what we have to believe? Uh, how do we hold on to to this? And uh, what I wanted to just lift up was in the times of adversity and the times of difficulty, especially as modeled in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially during the earliest times of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the emphasis on holding faith, not just being a solo lift, because there's, you know, a soul can only bear so much, but not just being that solo lift, but the emphasis of how important each, each of us is to one another, how important this aspect of community is. And thinking about the life of the Prophet, ﷺ, the ministry of the Prophet, ﷺ, uh, the mission of Islam in the time of Mecca, um, which in and of itself was during a persecuted period. Uh, Islam itself was not the mainstream, was not uh, the popular religion. Islam was, you know, persecuted. Islam was being practiced within houses, uh, in secret, uh, and when done openly was met with uh, very harsh uh, rebuttals of sorts and, and persecution to uh, an utmost degree. And what we want to kind of think about is in these moments that faith was not an easy thing to practice. Uh, faith was not an advantageous thing practically to practice um, in terms of uh, wanting to get ahead in that society or wanting to uh, make the most of whatever is, is the case, uh, whether business-wise or socially um, upward mobility, anything like that. Uh, the religion of Islam at that point was not um, to someone's advantage. Uh, it, it brought on a lot of uh, persecution. It brought on a lot of uh, blowback in different ways. And so how to kind of hold faith in, in, in times when holding on to faith itself is, as our prophet described, with like a hot coal, how, how to be able to do something like that. Uh, and, and not necessarily saying that that's going to make the lift any easier, but to think about what is that experience like when not done in isolation. And when we think about just the first moment of encounter with the Prophet Sallam and the faith and, and the revelation and the word. Uh, we see when he had first encountered this uh, with respect to the first verses of the Quran revealed, uh, his first, after receiving the revelation and repeating and having this incident on Ghare Hira or on Jabal Nur, the Mount of Light, uh, his first instinct was once he had received it to run back home uh, to his wife, to Khadija, and ask her to cover cover me cover me um and 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 seeking that that immediate support that 
this was this was something he didn't know how to make sense of. He didn't know what was going on. But to find that comfort within somebody else, in that in that person who was most trusted. Um, but you know, he could absolutely have just kept it to himself. He could have absolutely just had held on to it, and people start to notice, like, what's going on with him? Why is he acting all strange? Or like, was he is he okay? Is he bothered? But to be vulnerable enough to express and to have somebody to lean on to trust. Uh, thinking about what does it look like to hold on to faith in in these difficult kind of moments, but what value does it also have to have somebody that is that trusting? Um, we oftentimes look at the Prophet Sallallahu life in years, and we jump ahead, uh, and we we sometimes don't do justice to the mundane, to the daily life, to the times in between. That what happened between that first revelation and you know going uh, into the public sphere and and you know going from private dawa to a public dawa where the first couple of years of the prophet's message was generally to the people in his home was generally to the people in his immediate circle and then being able to branch from there into the wider community but what did it look like in in those times that when even the revelation would come at different times when the revelation would pause when the revelation would stop and and not come for a continuous period leaving the prophet feeling like he's detached like he is abandoned like he's forsaken that something is wrong with him his immediate instinct um would be in that in that aspect as we see when when the quran addresses it yeah you al-muzammil oh you who are covered the covered one um that you can think about and it's not a uh, it's not too far of a stretch to think that maybe it was a repeat of what happened after he was first given the revelation uh of uh, the first few verses of Surah Al-Alaq, that when he ran home and asked to be covered and bundled, perhaps this was another uh, incident as well, where he kind of is, this is coping mechanism of being wrapped and, and Khadija is there alongside him, but being able to process that through, being able to have somebody to work that through with and, and not to uh, undermine any or under, undersell any of what uh, Khadija Radulanha's role was in all of this, that we we sometimes don't give her that proper credit of how much of an anchor she was, but we see it coming from the Prophet Sallallahu in later in life as he would lift up to uh, his other wives, he'd lift up to the people that, you know, they're, they're, Khadija was really second to none, that that, that she she was uh, truly like his his biggest anchor, his biggest support. Uh, and, and thinking about for us that and especially for the other Muslims, that as they started to become Muslim, um, the, this was not just an easy conversion where their families, many of them were very tolerant and saying, oh, great, we have a Muslim in the family. It was met with very harsh rebuke. Uh, this, this was something that divided families, tore families apart, um, resulted in uh, very aggressive forms of, uh, of, of violence or aggressive forms of harm uh, to the people who had become Muslim. And so many people had lost their families. Many, many people lost their parents, their children, their siblings uh, amidst this divide on religion. And uh, what was there for them was not necessarily the absence of that pain or the absence of feeling that longing for connection of one's family, but what was there for them was was also, and it wasn't just ritual that was waiting for them. It wasn't just theology that was there. It was also a community um, that they had people that they could lean on. They had trusted individuals who they could they could lean on. They had new siblings, not necessarily to replace the old siblings or new parents to replace the old parents, but they had new relationships, new community to help them when times would get tough. And 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 this is absolutely the case when we find ourselves in a place that. It's hard to hold on to such faith. It's hard to hold on to faith of any of any kind uh, in in trying times, or even when uh, it, whether it's individually and it feels like life has just really got us down um, and and nothing is going our way, or if we're just getting disillusioned from what's going on in the world. Thinking about the value that community has uh, in, in in these settings and uh, the value that um, people relationships have as a uh, as, as a kind of glue to keep these different bricks, to keep these different things together. Um, the Prophet had kind of described the Muslims as bricks to uh, a house that that you know we 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 each build on each other, and where where we each build as a part of something. We're all a part of something uh, bigger than ourselves, but we come together in that way. But thinking about what's what's holding us together, because we could always assemble bricks and just put them on top of each other, but the slightest wind might might knock them over, even if they're heavy bricks. But thinking about what's what is that which holds them together, and when we look at the life of the Prophet, when we look at the message of Islam in the earliest periods, 
we see when they had the most to lose, when they were losing the most, when they were losing family, they were losing business, they were uh, losing uh, basic economic uh, you know, gains, they're losing all these different things. What held them together and what kept them tight, what kept them uh, strong enough and believing enough that they were willing to cross uh, you know, cross continents into Abyssinia, into Africa, uh, into modern day Ethiopia uh, to avert persecution or to to find asylum. They they were willing to stick it out in 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 Mecca. They were willing to migrate on foot to uh, Medina in 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 a uh, in a desert land. They're willing to do these things together, and they're willing to you know they they they're willing to go above and beyond just the average neighbor relationship because of what they found within each other, because of, uh, because of what united them in terms of Islam, but also because of what they found uh, as uh, they got to know the other person, they got to build the relationship with them. Uh, and think about that this was a society that was already fairly familiar with each other. They had already kind of been aware, but the religion of Islam brought them even closer, but it brought them in even closer to such a degree that no value, no money, no uh, worldly expense or loss could uh, shake what what they had, what they were building, what they had kind of held on to. And especially when this came in moments of grief and moments of difficulty, when they were able to uh, together bear the loss of uh, being maybe kicked out of their family or having to experience the persecution in 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 in, in joint and being able to not have to so uh, endure it just isolated. So thinking about that this model had been something that continued in the life of the prophet, what he tried to incorporate with his community, that having people, having other folks that where we as humans can bear and we can we can continue on with respect to our faith, uh, we have a certain capacity and we can do certain things, but we, we do get pushed to our limits, that our community is, is something that should be there in a way that helps us to lighten that load, but helps us to find that sustenance, find that nourishment. And if community is not doing that, um, we want to also take a look at what kind of community are we around. Uh, the community of the Prophet ﷺ was one that was built on trust, was one that was built on values, was built on the values of, uh, of Islam, of first and foremost of this common faith, but was also built on that value of respect, on that value of trust, on that value of honesty, uh, and thinking about it wasn't built, built on a value of transaction that, hey, we're just coming together because we want to uh, put put bets on something or we're doing it for economic purposes or for anything like that. Or, you know, it's not a gang that it's coming together for some kind of united cause that's some worldly aspect. They came together for the reasons of faith, but they, they benefited each other and stuck together uh, through all different purposes, but their foundation was laid with respect to faith. So sometimes we'll encounter community that's a little bit harsh. Sometimes we'll encounter community that's harmful for us. And we want to ask, how is that community, how are we inter- engaging with them? How did it kind of come about? Uh, and how does it sometimes detriment our faith when we get involved in those community spaces that are uh, that, that, that hurt our faith, that, that are toxic in some ways? Um, and sometimes it makes us disillusioned from community. But thinking about what was what were those ingredients that the Prophet Sallallahu came and and helped to shepherd with respect to his community. Um, he didn't come to preach an isolating message. He didn't come to just save himself. He didn't come to just do these things. He came not just to preach a message. He came in preaching a message, but in also helping to cultivate and grow a community that would then be able to holistically support each other. That would uh, not just be uh, that prayer group that would uh, meet up and now they go pray five times a day and that's all they do, but a community that would check up on each other, a community that would that would be there for one another in times of hardship, in times of grief community that would be there um, during economic uh, support and, and, and in different ways of, of, of a dynamic community. So when we look at the religion of Islam uh, and we see the aspect of this ummah, we can't just see it in that in that simple lens of a, of a spiritual community or just a faith-based community. This is a holistic community. This is uh, a, a, a faith that is grounded in a dynamic 
community. And so when we are struggling with our faith, when we are struggling with different issues of faith or just needing that kind of support, there's only so much that we can do on our own. There's only so much the Prophet was able to do on his own um, before he felt like he had to uh, you know, get his lifeline. He had to reach out for different means and support. And we see that with Khadija. We see that when he uh, leans on his companions at different times. We see that uh, when when he uh, you know, just just connects with his community in different ways that that the rest of his life was not lived in isolation. It was lived connected with people. Um, but it was done with appropriate boundaries as well. And this was something that was being figured out too of when can people come and see the prophet or how late can they stay at his place or different things like that that would later be addressed. But thinking about that the Prophet Sallallahu life, as much as we see it as him being the sole recipient of revelation, him having to bear this burden him having to take all this on, it's very easy for somebody like that to see themselves as better than everyone else and elevate themselves and make their life easier and everyone else's harder or try to unload their burdens on everyone. But even with this uh, this responsibility, he was still, uh, he did not divorce himself from being engaged with the community holistically, whether it was for the need of something that was uh, a economic product or a purchase or anything like that, or whether it was for any other aspect um, in terms of uh, working in the society, but it was it was holistic. It wasn't just religious. It, they, his community was not just there for him when uh, it pertained to matters of faith. So thinking about when we follow the model of our Prophet Sallallahu when we think about what our Prophet Sallallahu brought, brought a faith that for us, we we hold on to and we keep with us and, 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 and hold on dear to, but we don't do it uh, thinking that this is only just for me and not just for only Muslims, but thinking about dynamically how people around us are those who can help us in our faith. We surround ourselves with people who uh, whose values align with us, whose values help support and help bolster and improve our faith and not those who help to devalue it and to take it out. Um, so when we think about how we can hold on to faith, especially at this time, think about what that value is with respect to the community. Our Prophet Sallallahu had Khadija, had his uh, friend Abu Bakr Ali, uh, Omar had all these people that were that he would build upon and he would trust and, and build fundamental relationships to where he didn't just know about them superficially. He knew um, he, he knew them in terms of their heart. And, and it may be a hard thing for us because some of us are introverted, some of us are extroverted. But what is the value for us to be able to go into uh, different relationships and different uh, different you know kind of friendships that we have and investing in those as part of faith? Uh, and investing in those, not just to be a popular person because we feel we're not liked or we feel like we're alone or whatnot, but investing in those as much as we invest in our own ibadah as our rituals to see something as sustainable and helping to sustain our faith and holding on to our faith. So may Allah make it uh, easy for us to find such companions, such a sahaba as the family of the Prophet Sallallahu and as his companions. And may Allah enable us to find our Khadijas. May Allah enable us to find those people who we can lean on, who can trust in those difficult times. And may Allah make it easy. Again, please keep people of Palestine in your prayer, uh, the people of Gaza, especially during this time. May Allah enable us to be their helpers. May Allah enable us to uh, witness and to be bringers of justice for uh, those folks and to enable us to see, inshallah, free Palestine. And may Allah comfort us during this time and enable all of our hearts to uh, strengthen, but enable them to be strengthened together until we are joined on that day uh, on Yom al Jamma when we are gathered all together. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa akhra wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah.